Sonic, the heart of your system. PCI Express Generation 4 NVMe SSDs. They were launched during Ryzen 3000 launch during Computex this year. And I always asked myself the question, is this product really the reason to justify X570? Because we already know from previous testing that Generation 4 PCI Express is not really a reason to have for graphics cards. We know that with the Navi GPUs, Generation 4 is not really utilized. The 2080 Ti doesn't even use Generation 4. And we even know that if we use Generation 3 with eight lanes for a 2080 Ti, it's still fine in most of the cases. That's why Generation 4 for GPUs is not really a reason for me to justify X570. Because you might already have, let's say, X470 and you're maybe considering to get a 12 core or a 16 core Ryzen CPU. And then you will maybe also think, should I also upgrade to X570? And the biggest reason, besides having maybe better memory compatibility and also better VRM, could be PCI Express Gen 4. Now we have those NVMe drives with Generation 4, which were uh, announced and also shown during Computex this year. I have the Auros Generation 4 and also the Corsair MP600 Generation 4 NVMe drives right here, which I tested over the last days and the results are kind of interesting. We will compare benchmarks, we will do some real world testing like just copying files, Adobe Premiere, also some testing when it comes to temperatures and also game loading times. First of all, it doesn't really matter if you're getting an Aros NVMe drive or if you're getting an MP600 from Corsair, both of them are using the Fizen PS5016 E16 NVMe controller and as far as I know this is still the only NVMe controller on the market that is using generation 4 protocol. And that's what you need obviously to get the most out of PCI Express Gen 4. Still those controllers are faster than what we had previously with generation 3 but they're not utilizing generation 4 completely. If we take a look at the data sheet of the Fison controller it's capable of reading 5000 megabytes per second and also writing 4400 megabyte per second while the load or power consumption should be around 6 watt. Considering that PCI Express Gen 4 should give us up to about 7.5 gigabyte per second this is still not utilizing the full bandwidth of Gen 4. But also if we just take a look at those raw numbers, those are sequential read and write numbers and they don't really reflect real world performance. Still I did some crystal disk mark numbers to just show if the numbers the vendors are stating online are correct. So the first test was crystal disk mark sequential read and write. The Aros SSD did 5014 megabyte per second read, 4285 megabyte per second write. The MP600 did just about 5000 megabyte per second read and 4267 megabyte write. The 960 EVO, which is still a generation 3 NVMe drive, did 3184 megabyte per second read and 1539 megabyte per second write. Then I also added an MX500 from Crucial to the test, which is just a typical SATA drive uh, that was laying around here just to, to get some comparison numbers. That SATA drive was doing 550 megabyte per second read, 465 megabyte per second write. So just looking at the numbers, everything comparing the read and write data of the Fison controller and also what the vendors, uh, Aros and Corsair are stating online is just in line, everything is correct. But those numbers, sequential read-write, don't really tell us much. They don't really help much. Because typically you don't reach those numbers, right? That's why the first test is a typical copy just files test. I took one of the videos, which I'm just shooting right now, put everything into one folder. It typically consists about 15 video files and we have some screenshots in there, maybe five screenshots and some notes. Um, the peak files from Adobe Premiere, so total files maybe like 30, 40 files. And then just copying this folder to the same drive. The MP600 takes 26 seconds, same as the Aros drive, followed by the 960 EVO, which was much slower than I expected. It was 117 seconds, followed by the MX500 with 287 seconds. We can already see that just by the copy test 
the generation 4 NVMe drives are much quicker than generation 3. But you also have to keep in mind that I was using the smaller version from Samsung um, from 960 EVO with only 250 gigabyte. If we would use the one terabyte drive, it would have a higher read and write rate. So it would be a little bit quicker. Now the next test is taking this specific folder with all the video files and loading it into Adobe Premiere. That's what typically takes most that's really disk related when you're opening or when you're working with video files. Because if you're just editing the video, if you're cutting the files, it's not really disk related or not really disk dependent. That's not much you can test. Also the rendering is not really disk dependent. Loading the files took 49 seconds with the Aros SSD and 50 seconds with the MP600, took 55 seconds with the 960 EVO and 73 seconds with the MX500. You can see there's a clear benefit going from a SATA drive to an M.2 NVMe drive. Considering that I was using only the 250 gigabyte version of the 960 EVO, it was a little bit slower than the one terabyte drives generation four, but I think if we would maybe use the one terabyte version from Samsung, the results would be really close together. I think it would be 50 seconds for generation four and maybe 53 seconds for generation three. So there is not really a big difference. Now going over to game loading times. First test is PUBG, which is kind of interesting because no matter which SSD I used to install the game on, the result was exactly the same. It was about 14 seconds. There is really no difference here. I did every test three times and always used the average of each single test to make sure there is no really like a measurement tolerance or just to lower the measurement tolerance you can see everything is exactly the same so for PUBG it really does not matter if you're using an NVMe drive generation 4 or just a SATA drive there will be no benefit. Next test Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Both generation 4 NVMe drives took 8 seconds to load into a game state while the 960 EVO took 10 seconds and the Crucial MX500 took 11 seconds almost no difference. I think if we were, if we would use the bigger 960 EVO, it would probably be the same as the generation four drives and the SATA drive was expected to be a bit uh, slower. But I think if you're just sitting there in reality, not going to lose much time. Now we're getting over to the interesting testing because we already know by just looking at a data sheet that generation four NVMe drives consume more than generation three uh, NVMe drives and obviously also more than the typical SATA drives. That's why we have those massive heat sinks on those drives. And the question is, how good are those heat sinks? Are they necessary? And what happens if we really put those NVMe drives under load. That's why I decided to run the crystal disk mic 30 times in a row. And the result was mind blowing. It was, it was much worse than I expected. Looking at the MP600, the peak temperature was 88 degrees Celsius after 30 runs, which resulted in the drive throttling down to, uh, to about 2.3 gigabyte per second, while write was about one gigabyte per second. So we're losing over half of the performance in read and over four times the performance in write because the drive is getting so hot. This condition was on my X570 Aros Pro from Gigabyte in the top slot using an AIO and no airflow. It's just sitting on my table. I have no airflow. That's really the worst case scenario. The scenario. That's basically what we did when we were comparing those VRM uh, numbers back in like X299 VRM disaster video. That's really the worst case. That's something you typically don't have or you should avoid. But that's what could happen if you're using a case with zero airflow and if you're putting your drive in a bad location. The Aros drive was even more interesting because it hit 78 degrees Celsius and the result at 78 degrees Celsius is that the drive simply stops working. It stops and goes down to zero megabyte per second in read and also in write. It's funny that Crystal Disk Mark just keeps testing, but nothing happens. If you check in hardware info, there is, there is zero speed on read and write. The drive basically stops working and we have to reboot the system to get it back to work. As I said before, that's really worst case scenario. Then I thought, okay, that might be related to generation four drives and maybe that's because of the higher power consumption. Then went over to test the 960 EVO and damn, the result was even worse. The drive hit 101 
degrees Celsius under load, which resulted in throttling to 670 megabyte per second read, 187 megabyte per second write. So we're down to like 10 per second in write, 10% uh, in write, and down to like 20% in read. The throttling was insane. Then I thought, okay, the 960 EVO doesn't have any kind of heatsink on there, so there's zero heat capacity or zero uh, mass where the heat can go to. That's why I decided to use those plates. You know, in nowadays mainboards, most of the more expensive ones or premium boards, they always have those M.2 shields, uh, heat sinks, whatever you want to call it. And I always thought most of them are only for visuals. They only look good. They're going to hide your drive. And in real world, they're probably not doing much. But that's wrong because when I put it on my 960 EVO, you can see after 30 times running crystal disk mark, peak temperature was 10 degree lower and the drive was almost working fine. It was a 2.9 gigabyte per second read and 1.4 gigabyte per second write, which is almost the same as when it was running colder. It was about 3.1 gigabyte per second read and 1.5 gigabyte per second write, which means there is a significant improvement using one of those shields. And that's not because they have a lot of surface area because they don't. It's simply because they have mass and they can compensate the sudden load on the drive. And that's also what makes this cooler really good on the Auros drive because it's made out of solid copper. You can really feel that this thing is extremely heavy. And now you can maybe think about going back to the game loading test of Tomb Raider where it took about eight seconds to load the game. Then you have eight seconds of load onto your drive which means that your heatsink will maybe increase by, I don't know, three or four degrees Celsius. And then you're in game and in game, the load is extremely low on the drive. And then your heatsink has enough time to dissipate the heat over the surface area of your drive. Again, the crystal disk mark running a 30 times test is really the worst case scenario when you put your drive in a bad location or if there is no airflow inside your case. For the X570 Aorus Pro, for example, it would make sense to use your uh, to use the bottom slot which is sitting underneath the GPU and then you might think, "Hey, if I'm gaming, my GPU core temperature is hitting maybe like 70 degrees Celsius, which means that the cooler has a temperature of, I don't know, like 60 degrees Celsius. And then your air has maybe 55 degrees Celsius coming out from the side of your cooler. Therefore, you maybe think that the cooler is heating up your drive, but even 55 degrees Celsius hot air would still be capable of cooling your SATA drive underneath because otherwise you can see it's hitting like I don't know, 90 up to 100 degrees Celsius. If you're using an NVMe drive, make sure that you use the correct location. Sometimes you cannot really choose the location. On some boards, you only have one generation four NVMe slot, and therefore there's not much you can do. In that case, yeah, you can just improve um, the thermals inside your case, maybe uh, yeah, adjust your airflow, but make sure that you really have some airflow across those drives, especially if you're, I don't know, doing some professional work, if you have a lot of read and writes over your drive, then those things are becoming really, really hot. The question in the end is, is a generation for NVMe drive really worth it? In my opinion, it's not. Considering the price, one of those drives is about 250 euro here in Germany. And if we take a look at, for example, a 970 EVO, which is generation three, it's about 170 euro. And in the real world scenario, for example, the copy test, it's maybe a bit slower, but for gaming, I don't really see that there is a big difference. So justifying X570 for generation 4 to have a generation 4 NVMe drives, I wouldn't really do it. I don't think that the money you spend on the drives is really worth the benefit unless you have a special, I don't know, occasion, special um, thing, uh, program you can use to utilize your drives all the time, then it's maybe worth it. But then you also have to make sure that your drives are really getting cooled. Otherwise, stick to generation three drives they're much cheaper and you don't or you're not going to feel any difference and for some or most of the scenarios even a SATA drive will still be fine nowadays so much about this video it was a bit unexpected i didn't think that those drives are getting so warm and uh, yeah i also learned that those shields are really helping let me know what you expected see you soon <laughs>